everyone and welcome to Art Life. I'm Mrs B and I'm here today to show you how to create a really fantastic expressive sculpture using paper clay and some watercolours. Come with me, I'll show you how right now. Now this lesson is based on an artist named Alberto Giacometti. Now Giacometti was an artist from Switzerland. He was a painter, but mainly he is known for his sculptures. As you can see here, he would create very elongated, almost exaggerated limbs for his figures. What type of things come to mind when I show you images of his sculptures? For me, I think of long, tall trees with branches coming out. But now, if I told you that his artwork was created around the Second World War, how do you think that changes its mood or its emotions that it evokes? It makes me think of how people might have felt after the World War. Very cold, very empty, and maybe very hungry. And Gia Canetti was actually commenting on post-war trauma and how it might have affected the families and the soldiers affected by the World War. Now today we're going to use his very famous sculptures to create our own elongated kind of sculpture. However, you can choose to create any sort of stance or position as you like. Maybe you love running and you might choose to do a sculpture of someone running. Maybe you might want to choose to do something that looks more like a person standing up like a tree. It's completely up to you. We're just going to use the idea of Giacometti's sculpture to create our very own. So come with me now and we'll have a go and I'll show you how to create your very own. For our Gia Cometti inspired task today, we're going to use some paper clay. I'm using white because then we're gonna paint it later. We need some aluminium foil, as well as some watercolors, which we'll use to paint it. Just gather up your materials and we'll get started. If you don't have any of these things, please feel free to go down in the description where I've offered you a discount code to get some really fantastic materials from Zart Art. Now, the first thing I'd like to talk about today is the artworks by Gia Cometti. Now, the ones I've shown you earlier, you might have noticed that the limbs were very exaggerated. They were very long kind of limbs. And we're going to create a figure or a sculpture just like Gia Cometti did with our foil and our paper clay. But first, I want you to have a think about the design and what type of stance you'd like your person to have. So maybe you might just have a quick go, a bit of a sketch as to what type of action or stance you want your person to be in. You might even get someone in your family to do a pose for you. Like, I know my daughter loves ballet, so I might consider a bit of a ballet pose. And if I have someone in front of me, I might sort of have a look at where the arms go and maybe what the legs are doing. So I have a bit of a sketch here and that's gonna help me when it comes to creating my Gia Cometti figure. You might choose to do that first just to get your ideas out of your head. So I'm gonna put that to the side and grab my foil now. So my aluminium foil is actually going to act as sort of the insides of our Gia Cometti sculpture. We're going to use the foil because the paper clay is fairly expensive and we don't wanna use that too much. We're just gonna use this as a layer over the top. So. The first thing I'm going to do is create the head. There we go, head done. <laughs> it's not too tricky, but you can see this sort of size. It's probably the size of a 20 cent piece. That's kind of the sizing I'm working with today. All right, now I have to consider the torso or the body. And because Gia Cometti's style is not really proportioned the way a, a real person is. Um, he used figures that were a lot thinner. You could choose to do that. In which case you probably just squeeze the, the foil to a really tight kind of um, small cylinder like this. Or you could choose to do something a little bit more proportional, it's up to you. Okay, 
these are my arms. I want them to be the right length. So you can see my ballet figure is sort of coming to, to life there. Now, because we're using quite long limbs, you can sort of twist the alfoil to connect together like that. However, the magic clay will act as a bit of a glue, so you don't need to worry too much if it doesn't stick at this stage. You just kind of want to get your, your general idea of your figure. Just like that. Now it's time to use the magic clay. Paper clay can be purchased from most places. I know Crayola do uh, magic clay, I think it's called. Um, as well as Kmart have some light clay. This is a Zart brand. Um, it's a really fantastic, good quality product. And I use it all the time in my art room. And today we're using white, even though it can come in a colored format, we're using white because we want to add some paint later. So what we're literally going to do now is cover our foil in a layer of thin magic clay. This stuff can be expensive, which is why we're using the foil underneath. All right, so I've made a bit of a pancake and I'm going to cover my foil with my pancake as magic clay. Flattening it, you can mold it. You can see it's really stretchy and lovely to sort of work with. And I can start to attach the body in there as well. I can sort of bring that down as needed. Two. All right, don't forget to attach your arms. I find um, students using magic clay will often use too much rather than not enough. Um, so you might need to sort of monitor how much they're using um, if you're a parent or a teacher with a young child. Um, you can see that you don't need much and it, you can sort of push it along. You just don't want to make holes that you can see the foil, but you don't need much to sort of cover the foil. The idea is also to keep the texture kind of smooth. Um, G Committee used to use a lot of iron and metal, so it wasn't a smooth surface that he was working on. It was almost like this foil, as you can imagine, quite rough. But if we're um, planning on painting it later, if we have too much of a textured, bumpy sort of surface, that will make your life a little bit difficult for the next step. So patting it and flattening it with my fingers and covering it. And you can see that it, I can still move and mold the shape as needed. Now attaching my arms, it's just a matter of putting some magic clay and see it presses in straight away and that will hold it in place as needed. This is fantastic for construction skills for, for kids. Um, they're problem solving, they're using creativity, trying to work out how to make sure it's strong enough to stand, um, adding clay where necessary to give it that strength and stability, um, but also designing a really interesting uh, sort of figure with influence from an amazing artist. There's the arms.
Please remember to turn it around, look at the back, make sure it's nice and smooth. It's not just the front that is important. When it's a sculpture, it's three-dimensional, so you do need to turn it all the way around to consider a viewpoint from all different angles. So you do need to manipulate it, flatten it, smoothen it out. Don't just add it and then say I'm done. It's it's important to you know create an artwork that you're really pleased with. And if you take the time to um, use the product well, I think you'll be proud of your your outcome. Now, while the magic clay is still wet or um, soft like this, you can obviously manipulate it and bend it as needed. However, once it dries out, which takes a few hours, it is much harder to, um, to maneuver it. So I suggest sort of getting the structure and the, the position you want everything in before allowing it to set and dry. Okay. Now ideally my Geo Committee figure would stand up as well. So what I might do, and this is very good uh, problem solving for young kids, is consider how I could give that strength to stand up. I'm gonna flatten the feet a bit and attach the legs together like that to give it a bit of strength. There. So my general figure is now complete and I'm gonna leave that dry uh, for a little bit of time and I'll show you how to paint it with watercolors once we return. Now, the next step to our awesome Gia Kometi sculpture is to paint it. And because the magic clay or paper clay is so versatile, we can actually paint it with pretty much anything. Using acrylics will mean that the color is much, much brighter, but using watercolors means it's definitely less messy. So we're gonna opt to do the watercolors today. Now, when it comes to painting, you have a couple of options. You could choose to paint it the way Gia Cometti used to. Well, he used to use metal for his sculptures like bronze, and iron and things like that. So you could choose to paint in those types of metallic kind of colors, the blacks and things like that. That's more so if you're wanting the figure to really stand out and be quite bold. The second option is that you could paint it quite realistically, meaning that you could actually paint it to look like a person using colors for clothes, colors for the skin, colors for the hair and make it look like a real person. Or well, the third option is that you could be really abstract. You could choose to use lines or patterns or shapes and a variety of really strange colors to create more of an abstract uh, style within your sculpture. So they're the, your three options and whatever you feel suits your art style best, you can go ahead and do that. But today I'm gonna paint in a realistic style just to show you what it looks like. So I've got my brushes ready, I've got my watercolors ready. And because I'm doing sort of a ballerina, I'm going to paint her wearing a bit of a ballerina sort of dress. Now you can see when you paint 
that the colors look quite nice. This is quite a light pink, so it's not overly bright, but if you were to paint something a bit darker, you can see that the color is quite vibrant. And so I'm gonna use a mixture of realistic sort of colors. Painting something three-dimensional is definitely more tricky than painting something flat like a piece of paper. So I suggest just to make sure that you don't uh, get your table or surface messy to put a piece of paper down um, so that any wet sort of sections aren't gonna mess up your surface. Just a bit of a tip um, and some advice. Try not to make your paint too watery. You'll find that it runs and is too difficult to control if you get too much water on your brush, kind of like what has happened here. That's not ideal. So um, if that happens, maybe just try to make it go away by moving it around and then you can sort of paint over it. Now that my undercoat has dried, you can see that I'm adding some details, just like the string of the ballet shoes here over the top, just to add a bit of detail and interest to my artwork, make it even more realistic and interesting to the viewer. hasn't taken too long and I hope you've enjoyed sort of um, painting your three-dimensional figure it is a bit tricky and I'd love to see if you have done an abstract version or a geocometic kind of version of this task please make sure that you tag me at art life art lessons if so but for now I'm just gonna let this beautiful ballerina dry and what I might do just because I'd like to add a little bit of interest is I'm thinking I might add some material around um, the legs here to suggest a bit of a tutu for my ballerina figure. But that's obviously just an optional extra based on the figure that I've chosen to do. So it's as simple as that. I really hope that you've enjoyed learning all about Alberto Giacometti and his very influential and interesting sculpture style and how to go at creating your very own three-dimensional sculpture just like this one. And that you can subscribe to the Art Life YouTube channel so that you'll get some notifications for future videos. Thanks for joining me. Bye everybody.